live. Welcome back to the nature class. Let's get everybody all set up. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Earth Day. It's the 50th anniversary. So today I thought it'd be a great one to show how important uh, clean waterways are and how they affect our amphibians and our fish and basically how the process works. Okay, so today question or topic is how do animals without lungs breathe? So the way that humans breathe and other mammals is we intake air, it goes into our lungs, and then the oxygen diffuses through our lungs into our circulatory system. And then vice versa, the carbon dioxide will go through our circulatory system to our lungs where it diffuses through the tissues, and then that's how we exhale. So if you don't have lungs, how are you supposed to get oxygen to all the parts of your body? And the way you do that is through basically the same type of tissue in other places of your body. So fish, for instance, have gills. And as gills, they are able to, the gills have tissues, much like the inside of our lungs. And so when water goes through it, the diffused oxygen from the water gets captured in the, lung, in the gills and goes through the gills and into the circulatory system that way. Fish do not have lungs like humans do, or like other mammals do, I should say. And there's some animals that don't have gills or lungs. And the way that they breathe is actually through their skin. It's called cutaneous respiration. I got some banners, so I'll go ahead. So this is the one, so this is basically what I just said about the fish, how the fish basically allow the water to pass through their gills and the gills are able to absorb the oxygen through the water into the gills and into their respiratory or the circulatory system. And then we go to things that don't have lungs or gills like earthworms and some amphibians. For instance, there's some salamanders that don't have lungs. Gonna be just checking if anybody had any questions. So these are earthworms. Whoop, these are just some of my compost worms I have. Oh, they are messing up everything. <laughs> and they, sorry guys, I just need to figure out how to. My earthworm just messed up my entire show. Okay, I think we're back on. My worm sabotaged my live nature class. So worms and some salamanders don't have lungs at all and they breathe through their skin. Now, all amphibians have some kind of this respiration through their skin. And the way that it works is we're gonna have a little activity. So the oxygen in the air attaches to the slime and the slime basically dissolves the oxy oxygen and is able to pass the oxygen through the skin where it reaches the circulatory system. And that way the blood goes through, goes to all the organs it needs, and as a result, the organs take the oxygen and then push back up the carbon dioxide. Hi Bryce, how are you? So this uh, activity is gonna show how that actually works. So if you'd like to do this at home, you're gonna get two pieces of sponge and you're gonna put soap on one of them and rub it in and go ahead and put soap on the other one too. Kind of let it soak in. And this represents your salamander or your worm skin. And the soap represents the oxygen in the air. And as you can see, when there's no slime and nothing that can help transport the oxygen, it's really hard to get any of that soap to go through, right? However, if you add a little bit of water, like slime, get a little saturated, that helps diffuse the oxygen, and as a result, you get bubbles. And those bubbles represent the oxygen that is going through 
the skin itself. Now this would probably work better if it had some coloration so you can see how well those bubbles, as you can see, there's some bubbles that are being made, are going through the skin and being dissolved and worked into the system. Now, the same thing applies for pollutants in the water. I'm just gonna go to my banners. Now, if the slime does dry out, then as you can see with this one, it has no slime, there's no bubbles to be made. It really, it has to have that slime and it has to have that water to help transport that oxygen. If there's no slime, there's no oxygen and the animal does suffocate. Same thing works though if the animal is exposed to pollutants because the outside of the body is essentially its lungs, it's very sensitive to any kind of contaminants in the water. And once it is exposed to those contaminants, what happens, there we go, is the oxygen that's being diffused through their skin is also contaminated. And this is why amphibians are considered indicator species. The, which are species that kind of tell environmental scientists the health of the ecosystem that's around them because they are so sensitive to pollutants and can absorb pollutants so much, they basically are able to tell these researchers how the health of the ecosystem is changing. And this is kind of like the canary in the coal mine situation. I don't know if you've heard of that, where basically they would carry the canaries into the coal mines before humans would go in to see if there's any kind of toxic gases that were around. If the canary dies, then more than likely, it's also very dangerous for the humans to go into. So same with the frogs and the amphibians. If you start seeing a bunch of frogs dying around in your local pond, best bet is to not go in that water because it contains something that is very harmful. Is there any Questions. I really like that experiment, except for I didn't bring a towel. So this is why having really healthy waterways, very clean waterways, not dumping chemicals, not putting your oil into our river systems, like your old, old oil or allowing detergents to go down the storm drains or even fertilizers and runoffs can all be very, very dangerous to these amphibians and their very sensitive skin, essentially their lungs on their outside. Let's see if there's any questions. Well, thank you all for joining me for another nature class every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next for Friday, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but it's going to be fun, I promise. So same time in two days. And then tonight, we're also going to be doing story time. So thank you guys for joining me. Have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.